the provocation I want to put to you, the idea that we're going to explore with the help of this, is that all rational numbers, rational numbers, what are rational numbers? Before we proceed, what makes a number rational or irrational? Rational. Yeah, I, I heard some ideas there that are sort of floating around. Uh, so we, we have the idea that numbers can be on the number line, but there are some numbers that are not rational, like say this guy, and you can put him on the number line. Uh, you can't put him very precisely, but he's there between, between three and four, right? It's a little something more specific. It has to do with the start of this word. What does rational really mean? Yeah, so it means you can write numbers as a fraction, or a, as a ratio, right? Um, for a very long time, mathematicians thought that the only kinds of numbers that existed were numbers that could be written as a fraction, that were rational. Which is why they said, well, if there's a number that you can't write as a fraction, then that number is, that's a crazy idea. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, can you think of such a number? This is, this is predating a, a good understanding of what this number was. For a long time, people thought this was like some fraction. We just didn't know what it was. So people thought, mathematicians thought for a long time, that's nuts to be able to, like, as if you can't write a number as a fraction. And so that's why in our human, in our English language, this word literally means, like, when you call someone irrational, what does that mean? You're saying they're, they're crazy, illogical, that they don't make sense. And that's sort of a carryover from back in the time when we didn't think that irrational numbers made sense, but we do now. Now, rational numbers. Um, I heard the, number de the word decimals thrown around before. Have you ever noticed that rational numbers, every single rational number, falls into one of two categories when it comes to decimals, right? If you write a rational number in, in decimal form, you'll get two different kinds of decimals. Do you know what they are? Yeah, what do you reckon, Hershey? Oh. He gets it in one. How much have you prepared today? Um, terminating, terminating, and recurring. Maybe your mind didn't go there straight away because you learnt these a long time ago, right? A terminating decimal. Uh, give me an example of a terminating decimal. Any, any terminating decimal you like. Come in. Morning. Grab a sandwich. Sorry, uh, say that again. <laughs> I missed it. 5.1. 5.1. Sure. That's fine. Okay, give me another one, just for the sake of it. Give me another one. Give me one more interesting. Wow. Wow. I, I deserved that, I suppose. Okay, sure, fine. All right. So these are decimals, and they stop. They stop, right? And it wouldn't take too much work to work out what the fractions for each of those were. So far, so good. But we also know that not all decimals not all rational numbers that you write as decimals stop. Some of them go on, on and on and on forever. They're recurring. So give me an example of a recurring decimal. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right, 5.1 repeater. 5.11111. And don't, don't tell me. I will give you the next one. 5.121212121. Okay. What is your, with your obsession with these numbers? Anyway, okay. So, both of these can also be written as fractions, just for the sake of it. What is um, 5.1 repeater? What is it as a um, fraction? How would you write it? I'll give you a tip. It starts with a 5. No. What's the fraction part? 0.1111111. What's the fraction that gives you that? Do you remember this back from year 7? Yeah, here she goes. Ooh. 51 over 100 would give you this. Wait, no. Uh, 51 over 10 would give you this. But 51 over 100, now this is interesting. This is actually a really important point. Um, it gives you a terminating decimal. I'm looking for this recurring one. I wonder if you remember. You can confirm this with your calculator if you like. It's 5 and a ninth. Uh, whereas this guy would be 5 and 12 over 99, which we could write as, uh, what would we write that as? common factor of how your, well, our brains are not awake yet. Let's try again. Common factor of three between these here, right? Maureen Nicholas, grab a seat. So that makes it four over 33, okay? Hurry up, grab a seat. Get a laptop out too. Okay, now, terminating decimals, 
recurring decimals. But my question is, what makes a fraction um, one or the other? Is there like some kind of pattern to this? Now, we're mathematicians. So we know there has to be a pattern somewhere under there, even if it's a little bit hard to find. And that's what this is going to help us with. Okay, so you got your spreadsheet there. We're going to put some things on this spreadsheet, okay? Better late than never, Farwan. <laughs> Grab a seat, hurry up. Okay, so in your spreadsheet, and uh, I'm gonna, no, you can, you can see, I think that's fine. In the top left-hand corner, I'm just going to say, let's call this column the left-hand column. Let's call it, uh, oops, sorry. Let's call it M for a number, OK? So I'm going to fill in this first column with numbers. Now, spreadsheets are really cool. Every cell in a spreadsheet is its own little calculator, at least if you set it up to be that, OK? So what I'm going to do is, rather than write the numbers that I want, I'm going to get the spreadsheet to create the numbers that I want. So the first number I want is just, one. That's the only number I actually need to type. The spreadsheet's going to calculate the rest of the numbers for me. I just want the natural numbers, the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. I could type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. But I, I don't need to. To get to 2, I'm just going to say, now watch carefully. Uh, it's a bit small. Sorry that it's um, resolution is too high, but whatever. I'm going to type equals. That's going to tell my spreadsheet, hey, don't just, um, oh, you can see it up there a bit clearer. Don't just accept this number. Actually do a calculation that I'm about to tell you, okay? Now, I want the next number to be two, which is just the previous number plus one, right? And then I want this to be three, which is the previous number plus one. So to write the previous number, I'm literally going to click on or, or select the previous number. Now. When you, you can move your mouse or uh, you know, touch your screen or whatever. When you hit that cell up there, right, it gives you this. What does this mean? What's it stand for? What's the A stand for? The A stands for the, what are they called again? Stands for the column. The two stands for the row, right? And you should find, even if you're using Excel, I'm not, I'm using Google Sheets. Um, you should find that naming convention is similar, okay? So A2, it highlights it in color as well to indicate to you, hey, I recognize you're not just saying random letters and numbers. You're actually referring to a, a place, a cell within this spreadsheet. What did I want to do? I wanted the previous number plus one. Plus one. OK. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit equals. And you're like, wow, my bone. It can add one plus one. Good on you, spreadsheet. OK. Now, that part was decidedly more work than just typing two, wasn't it? You're like, wow, that was a really inefficient way to just say two. Um, but the reason why we did that is so that we can save space and time for the next things. Come back to this cell that we just created, right? What we're going to do is, uh, like that. If you, uh, on, your, on your computers, if you've got a, um, an actual proper computer rather than me, which I have with a tablet, um, just right click on this cell, right click on this cell, and you should get your own menu. I know it won't look like my one, but you should have the option for copy there, right? And if you've got the copy, if you right click on there. So I'm going to copy that cell. Now here's the cool thing. What I've copied is not the value. I haven't copied the value. I've copied the formula that created that value. I've copied the go to look at that cell and add one. That's what I've really copied. So now if you highlight a bunch of cells, as many as you like, go down, like I'm going to go down, how far can I go? Let's see. I'm going to go down maybe, yeah, whoa, that was more than I wanted, but that's okay. I'm going to go down like 50 rows. Okay, so I've highlighted that. You can highlight that with your computer as well. And with those highlighted, if you right click on your highlighted selection and now go ahead and paste, because what you're pasting is the formula, right? The instructions, not the actual numbers. You're not going to get a whole bunch of twos. You're going to get, well, it looks at the previous cell and adds one, and looks at the previous cell and adds one. Okay. So I've got all these numbers. That's great. N for number. Now, what am I trying to investigate? I'm trying to investigate rational numbers and patterns in whether the decimals are terminating or recurring. Okay. 
Now this is just an easy way to generate some fractions. If these are all the counting numbers, right, then I can work out fractions associated with them by saying let's have another column and let's make it one, whoops, sorry, one divided by whatever that number was. 